Hey everyone, Karant here, welcoming you back to Suikoden 5. In the last episode, we finished up affairs in Stormfist by confronting Sialides with the Twilight Rune. We defeated her, but she whisked herself off to Solfalena and challenged us to meet her there. A little bit later in the episode, she whisked herself off to Rainwall and killed Solombaros with one hit of the Twilight Rune. That left Eurumbaros a discombobulated mess, and in an alternate Felena, we recruited Eurumbaros, a broken and completely disheveled Eurumbaros, as the final star of destiny, and hoped that he could indeed reform himself as he pledged to do. In this episode, we are going to begin moving things forward toward the attack on Sol Felena itself. And one thing I want to re-emphasize is that this is your check of the 108 stars of destiny. If you do not have them all, you need to go get them, any of them that are still available. If you do not have them and you cannot recruit some of them, then you will be exempt from the game's best ending, period. There will be no further opportunities to get Stars of Destiny after this point, so please be aware of that. In order to figure out what to do going forward, we need to go into the War Room and see what Lucretia wants of us. It's just about over, your highness. It's been a rough ride. As rough as a ride in a mining cart. Not one of my carts, mind you. A human cart, I mean. We beavers have been busy as... Well, busy as beavers. And we thank you all. Human, dwarf, beaver, dragon horse. Yep, and now it's time for the final battle. Sure took long enough. We, the Dragon Cavalry, shall ride into battle and deliver Godwin a crushing blow, your royal highness. We'll be ready for battle tomorrow, your highness. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Very well. Get a good night's sleep, everyone. You'll need it. And one more thing. I need not remind you that Solfalena is home to the Sun Rune. The Sun Rune possesses devastating power. It is said that it once reduced half of the continent to ashes. That's highly unlikely to happen again, but it can't be completely ruled out either. I simply ask that those who fear for their lives leave the castle tonight, no questions asked. If you need food or money for your travels, please take it. And make sure this message gets to everyone. Thus begins the second and final Night Before Scene of Suikoden 5. Unlike the last one, I'm going to talk to everybody. I'm going to record this all at once. So, if this ends up getting split, I will try to split it at the most, I guess, most organic spot possible. But I am going to be talking to everybody. I will go ahead and mention, if you want to rush through this and plow on to the following events, there are two people that you are required to talk to before the maid will let you go to sleep. That is Leon down in the infirmary and George on the other side of the castle. If you talk to those two, the maid will stop telling you to go visit people and will allow you to go to sleep and you can, of course, proceed accordingly. I'm not doing that. I'm leaving those two for last because, well, it is the last night before scene. I want to talk to everybody. I want to get a real sense of what all is going on in the castle before we go after Solfalena. As such, I'm going to start at the top of the castle and I'm going to go down from there and then I'm going to go to another part of the castle and go from the bottom up then I'm going to go to another part of the castle and go from top down. So I'm going to prosecute this very methodically, essentially. All right, so we're going to start in the tablet room here. And you can actually look at the tablet if you want to. And you notice, essentially, if you move down... Let's see, there's no way to move down this quickly, sadly. I don't think. You would think there would be, but if we look on the list here, we see, of course, that the Tablet of Destiny is completely filled out. We have every single Star of Destiny. If you choose the Defend route, the Chizoku Star, Roy, will be wiped out. 
if you were to not recruit either Eresh or Salombaros, of course that one would be empty. And if you chose not to recruit other members of the Stars of Destiny, of course their entries would be empty as well. But we have a full tablet of all 108 Stars of Destiny, so things are looking pretty nice for us. Alright, so while we're in the tablet room, let's talk to Zweig and Lorelei for a moment. Something's been bugging me. There's a group known as the Crimson Pilgrims mentioned in a Sindar legend Killy told me. I mean, I'm sure it couldn't be, and yet... That's a good question, and I am curious, I don't know very much about the idea of these Crimson Pilgrims. It's obviously a legend that Zweig is interested in because he's interested in everything Sindar, but... I don't know a whole lot about them. I honestly don't remember right offhand if other Suikidens talk about the Crimson Pilgrims. I might have to look at that and put it in in post, but I don't remember right offhand. Hello, Lord I. You're planning to leave here once the war's over, right? I'd planned to stick around here once you were gone, but I don't think that'll be necessary. I won't find what I'm looking for here. That is true. And of course, keep in mind with Lorelei that Suikoden 5 is set probably around a decade before the events of Suikoden's 1 and 2. So the fact that she pops up in Gregminster in Suikoden 1, and then pops up again in Gregminster in Suikoden 2, indicates that she does end up going to the Northern Continent to try to find some more answers. And I don't know that she really finds them, but still, she looks anyway. Moving out here, we saw a suspiciously black caped person. So, hi Zarase, or Killy? Okay, that is Killy. I guess because it was so dark, I thought it was Zarase and her blackness, but I guess it's Killy and his redness. If Godwin falls, there won't be anyone left who knows about these ruins. But Four Eyes is smart enough to find his way there on his own. He is indeed. I mean, as much as I'm not the biggest fan, admittedly, of Zweig as a character, he's okay, he's not great. He is certainly smart, and there's no question about it, so... Killy... And I think Killy doesn't like the idea that Zweig can find the ruins on his own. Because Killy seems to... Kind of be a little prickly about anything Sindar, for whatever reason, I don't know. Alright, so moving down to the third floor, I'm going to run over to the war room real quick. I don't remember if anybody's actually in the war room right now, but... Might as well check anyway. Okay, no, nah, war room's empty. Alright, that's fine. Let's see if there's anybody immediately outside, because this third level doesn't lead to anything else. Oh, there's Zarase. Hi. Here to gaze at the stars as well? Leknot calls me a traveler of the night and bearer of the stars, but I hardly deserve such a title. Though I see the stars that dwell within each of you, I could not possibly hope to know where fate may take you. And I myself am simply one star among many. Oh, Zarase getting all meta there on us. Huh, go figure. Okay, nobody else out here, unfortunately. Alright, so, let's go ahead and snake our way down to the second level. And actually, something of an empirical experiment I've kind of figured out, and that is, it's quicker to take the stairs down to this second level than it is to take the elevator. Because there's an extra loading time with the elevator, and there isn't with the stairs, so go figure. Alright, hi, see us! You've been, as I described you very recently, a hardcore bench warmer in my party, but still you're worth talking to anyway. I'm going to protect Lucretia right through to the final battle. Okay, I revised my statement. Lily, you got anything? I'll be assisting my lady once the Siege of Solfalena begins. I hope you can forgive me for not being able to go to battle with your highness. Well, yeah, that's understandable, I guess. Hi, Lucretia. Please turn in early tonight. We're going to need you at your best tomorrow, Your Highness. Well, sound advice from a sound strategist, as to be expected. Alright. Oh, not what I meant to do. Come on, you. Alright, Prince, let's go to Silene's room! And nobody's in it, of course. Except... Hi, Kyle! Huh? Ah, Prince. Thought I heard someone in here. You shouldn't enter a lady's room without permission, you know. Then what are you doing here? This room is just the way she left it. 
All right, Prince, after you. I'll go ahead and lock it up. Hey, don't worry. I'm not going to go through her private stuff. No need to if you catch my drift. Well, he still stands there, so we can talk to him and see if he's got something else to say. Oh, wish there was still a reason for me to stay up late around here. So, pretty much, you were just focused on trying to romance Sialides. Okay. I mean, granted, she's a pretty good-looking woman, but still. Okay, yeah, that's it from him. Oh, well, bye-bye, Kyle the Womanizer. And hello, Hazwar. Little Lim was so beautiful at her coronation ceremony. She was so nervous, so sad, like a delicate ice sculpture that looked as if it could collapse at any time. She looks so much better when she's wearing that cute smile of hers. Let's bring back the little limb we all know and love, shall we? Don't worry, I know you can do it, Friador. Well, that's the goal. I mean, we tried to do it in the Queen's campaign and it didn't work out very well, so... Yeah, let's try to change that now. Alright, let's see if George is in his room. He's not in his room. That's unfortunate. Is he standing out here? He's not standing... Oh, duh, of course. He's on the other side of the castle, like I told you. Alright, so now down to the first floor. Let's see who all's hanging around here. Okay, so we've got a few folks, all our shopkeepers and the like. Let's go ahead... Actually, let me start with Chuck. He should be still in the storage room. Your Highness, please tell my lady to relax a little bit. I feel so sorry for her. My lady always seems to be brooding over this thing or that thing. That's true. A radiant girl like my lady should let her beauty shine. Yeah, Lucerina is a lovely lady. Although, our girl takes the weight of the world on her shoulder. Holy cow. Hey, Shinro. Hey, Prince. I'm thinking about doing business with Armas when the war's over. Traders speak a universal language. Before you know it, we'll have friendly relations with Armas, too. Just watch. My grandfather's big old abacus isn't just a decoration. Well, you go to it, buddy. Free markets are definitely good for virtually every aspect of society, I think. Although there are certainly some problems with it in terms of, say, oligarchy and the dismemberment or essentially the displacement of wealth and what have you. I've been listening to the soldier gossip ever since I set up shop here. They're my customers, after all. Selling whatever armor I happen to have on hand just won't cut it anymore. I'd like to get involved in the manufacturing process by teaming up with craftsmen. That's a good plan, too. I mean, this is pretty much a John Rockefeller style of things. Control... Well, no, that's more a Carnegie style of controlling things, I should say. Carnegie was more of a vertical integrationist, that he wanted to control every step of the steelmaking process from top to bottom. And that sounds like what Mosin's trying to do. Rockefeller on, the, Rockefeller, on the other hand, was more of a horizontal integrationist. In other words, he wanted to control every single oil refinery in the country, and he just about did with his business at Standard Oil. Okay, so for whatever reason, Cyro's not in the shop. I don't know why, but we'll maybe see him later. Okay, actually, let's go ahead and keep going clockwise here. We'll get to the magician's last. Hey, Boston, how's it going? I think I'll spend tonight tending to my collection. Okay. I mean, sure, if you ain't got nothing better to do, but you could come with me and roam the castle. I mean, all right, whatever. Hi, Vicky. When this is all over, let's throw a crazy party. I don't have much luck with that stuff, usually. I always disappear before the food comes out. But not this time. This time, I'm going to eat no matter what. Well, you've said that every other sweet get in, and it hasn't worked out for you, but hopefully it will. Oh, hi. Goodbye, yeah. Damn it. No takers again. And I thought the ladies would be biting like crazy before the big battle. Grr, I can't figure out why they don't like me. Maybe because you're a creep, and you're skeevy, and you have no personality whatsoever? But wait, this is no time to be carrying on like this. I've just got to stop being so picky. I'm going to propose to one lady after the other until one of them says yes. They're all going to say yes to a restraining order. 
I'm gonna get engaged tonight no matter what. One of them will get it. I just know it. Um. Oh, dear. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> moving on. Hi, the guy. They say this will be a decisive battle, but all battles are decisive. Do not be too concerned. A blade sharpened too often will easily shatter. And Dongo's not at his forge for a change. I guess we'll see him later. And we've got two of our mysterious magicians hanging out here. Let's talk to Levi first, because he's less mysterious. <laughs> this castle is actually quite a scary place. And I'm not talking about the castle itself. Rather, what's in it? Okay. Any clarification? That rune mistress. That lady in black in front of the table of promise? She makes even me nervous. Okay, so you're creeped out by Zarase too. Don't worry. So are we all. Hi, Jean. Uh, Jean? Students of rune magic are an interesting lot. Tee. <laughs> no, no, I need more from you than that. I'm not getting more from you. Darn. Hola, gato. Hello. Of course I'm going to talk. Like I said, I'm going to talk to everybody in the castle. <laughs> Alright, first floor. Alright, so, I think I want to start over here first, and, okay, how am I going to work my way around here? I'm skipping the infirmary, like I said, because I'm talking to Leon and George last. Uh, hi there, Nocula. I knew it. She still hasn't wiped that stupid grin off her face. She can't. Didn't they explain that? Seems there's no escaping Nethergate even after it was disbanded. Damn it. Killing her wouldn't settle the score with Nethergate. Nope, not in, unless you killed Shigur and Oboro. And Fuyo, for good measure. So how are y'all doing? Are you guys in here? Yeah, you're in here. Okay. Uh, hi, Sigiri. Good night. What? That's it? Seriously? Come on. Hey, Fuyo. I've got a lot of work left, but I think I'll call it a day. It's okay. I'll leave the rest for when I return from Solfalena. That way, I'll have to come back here. Eh, I could understand that. Anything different? Still, if I leave too much work, I may not want to come back at all. Oh, the joys of balance. Hey, Shigur. I'm going to be the only one left. What a pain. Oh, really? You're not coming with us? Ah, I guess not. Okay. Hey, Oboro. Your Highness, how about using my business card as a good luck charm? Huh? Does it work? Of course it does. It gives you peace of mind. Well, that's what placebos are for. Even the most expensive good luck charm can only offer peace of mind. So why should my card be any different? Yeah, good point. Peace of mind is definitely an important thing, although... I mean, I'm glad he gave us that business card for free, ultimately. Alright, so hello, Luna's nice crowd. Oh. Uh, well, Aswar obviously is in her room, but we've still got Erda and Isato, so... Er, yeah, there we go. Let's talk to Isato first. I will help you in whatever way I can for the sake of Haswar and the Holy Land. Is that it? Yep, okay. Uh, Erda, what you got? Will this barbarous human war never end? I shouldn't talk like this. It's simply a barbarous human affair. It's my problem, too, because of Isato. I'm going to do whatever it takes to end this barbarous human conflict. That's probably all you got, I think. Hmm. A new barbarous human war will surely break out after this one ends. Alright, on that optimistic note, let's head out of here. Okay, so is anybody in the gear room? I mean, I would figure Babbage and Sorensen probably are. And Lou. Hello, Babbage. Actually, let's save you for last. Let's get normal voice out of the way first. I even have to wash dishes now. It's like she's his apprentice now, not me. Oh dear, you poor guy. Alright, so let's get the Lou voice going. Don't bother me. Can't you see I'm busy? Talk to apprentice number one if you need something, hmm? Oh my god, she's even talking like Babbage. Hmm? Now, why did I start calling him Apprentice Number One? Let's see. When the second apprentice came, I started calling them Number One and Number Two to tell them apart. 
Hey, where did apprentice number two go anyway? Eh, who cares? Gears are all that matter. Oh god, I'm gonna start voicing her like Babbage now. What is it? Yes, I know you're going off to battle. These gears are far more important to me. Now go away, hmm? Oh well, GG Babbage, GG. Alright, so next up, as we pass the angel statues, we have the library, where of course we can find all his red and Arish. You have provided me with a treasure trove of ancient tomes, a delightful yield for which I deeply thank you. You're welcome. I mean, hey, I love reading too. Hey, Arish. Should the ruinous light cover the land? Eresh must once again open the door and descend into the darkest depth. Perhaps Eresh's meeting you was meant to prevent that from happening, one chosen by the Dawn Rune. Maybe? Eresh's power is your power. Your wish is Eresh's command, one chosen by the Dawn Rune. Okay, thanks. I don't use you in battle much, but I'll keep that in mind. 